We had 43 local teams make the playoffs along our various classifications, you know, uh, UIL, TAPS, homeschool, <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, you can make the argument. That paper football. <laughs> we had a paper football playoff team. <laughs> Dude, I love to play paper football back in junior high. <laughs> uh, uh, we're off the rails already. <laughs> Uh, you can make the argument we probably have before that uh, too many teams make the playoffs. Um, but, and there are going to be some lopsided matchups this week. I mean, that's just part of it. You're going to get some nine and ones versus some three and sevens. Uh, and it's going to look like that. But nevertheless, there are some good matchups. So what first round matchup has you intrigued? What are you looking forward to? Well, I'll just jump in. I just realized, or or a, a day or two, I realized, Bryce, you sent out, you was like, okay, here's the games we were covering. Here's your choices, Chad. And I was got to that think about it. was after DJ had picked. You right. got, and I, and, you got and the I got second to, draft pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got to, you know, like I was con- contemplating the Thursday game and whatever, and then and then I picked La Vega versus Dunbar, which I think is a really good matchup. La Vega is a third place team and Dunbar is a second, but La Vega is still going to be a favorite in that game. And then I realized later that you'd offered me the Midway Walks a hatchet game, and, I, and that just kind of slipped my mind. And I wanted to have a take back, but <laughs> <laughs> I did but offer I it to you. I was willing to go somewhere yeah. else, so I'm yeah, gonna I, um, I'm gonna re- remind you of that. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, it'll, it'll work out that way. Cause I'll take my camera and I'll shoot that La Vega Dunbar game. And, and you can be back here yes. close at hand for the podcast, the late Correct. night podcast, which I yeah. assume will continue into the playoffs. Yes. But yeah, both of those are fantastic. Um, I picked Waxahachie DJ has already picked midway. I see. Um, and I feel like that is, uh, speaks to the fact that it is a toss up type of I, a game. I agree. Yeah, I, I think it's a toss up game. Uh, I've heard a lot of good things about Waxahachie's quarterback, that he's apparently mm-hmm. pretty talented. Midway's got a not bad one of their own in Ty Brown. He's done a he's done the job, but it's really been other guys kind of elevating their game to join Ty Brown. I think that's that's really helped this surge by Midway. They came out and punched Weiss in the mouth. And and Weiss didn't really recover. I mean, you know, it wasn't just a win. It was a beatdown. So give it up for the Midway Panthers. They are surging. And they had that extra week, like China Spring and Lorena did as well, to kind of prepare for the playoffs. It could be a good thing, could be a bad thing, but I think it's probably mm-hmm. a good thing. I mean, you know, having that extra time to rest up and to prepare. So, DJ, what, what game kind of jumps off the page for you? Uh, well, I'm going to go cover West Teague on, on Friday down at UMHB. And I think that's a pretty good matchup, uh, as well as Whitney Grosbeck, which is going to be here, at uh, Waco ISD on Saturday. Um, I think those teams, uh, are, you know, last year they played really well, uh, at this point in the season, uh, Whitney beat Teague last year. Um, so I don't know. I just, I feel like those are some pretty good matchups, um, you know, they're, they're both kind of in like that sort of middle area. T could have finished third if they hadn't beat Grossbeck, right? Like they finished second. So uh, that was also kind of a toss up. And I, I ended up going with T just because I feel like, I don't know, they they kind of really toughed it out at the end stretch, whereas West kind of was just really um, consistent playing kind of those charter schools at the end. So uh, Well, and they didn't get to play. You know, I mean, I guess they played last week against Inspired Vision, right? Or was that another? Yeah, yeah okay, that was yeah, a Thursday yeah, they, game. They, right? they, their bye week was like right, right before the, like at the beginning of the district. Right. Season. So but then yeah. against Gateway, Gateway forfeited on that on that thunderstorm night. You know, so they missed a week of actually playing there. Hey, uh, before we move on to the next question. Axel Valley Mills could be really good. Valley Mills has played really well at times this year. Axel, congrats to them for being 10 and 0, getting in the state top 10. About half their schedule is really weak teams. And 
you know, when I saw Michael Haig, who will be doing the Axtell Valley Mills game for us uh, uh, this week, I saw him uh, Monday at our uh, Baylor luncheon press conference. Um, he came up to me immediately and was like, thank you. Thank you for giving me that <laughs> game. Uh, he's excited about that. And he agrees yeah. that, uh, that I, and I agree that I think it could be a really good game. Valley Mills is headed in the right direction. I think clearly that district that they came out of is better than Axel's district. Uh, um, you know, and, and no, I mean, it's not Axel's fault, uh, the district they're in, uh, and they took care of business. They rolled through mm-hmm. their, their regular season. But as Chad pointed out on the podcast last week, they do have, you know, some, some Moody's and some Hubbard's and some wins like that on their schedule. Uh, Valley Mills, um, you know, they're, they're trending in the right direction. And, um, you know, we, we had the eight to a coaches on a pod earlier this season. And I asked coach Featherston about, you know, their weight room commitment and that's really, you know, taken off and uh, it's something they take a lot of pride in. Um, so yeah, I agree. I think that'll be a good one. I'll mention one more. Um, I, I agree with you, Chad, that I think Midway walks is going to be a fun game. Uh, but, and I, I just need to do as I make my picks. I need to do do at least a little bit of research. But just you know, on the surface, Gatesville Gonzalez looks like a kind of a toss up game. Um, anytime you get those two versus three first round matchups, I think those have the potential to be you know obviously better than the one versus four. And Gatesville six and four, Gonzalez is six and three. Um, I, you know, we've talked a little bit about. Uh, what Aaron Hunter's done there for the Hornets this year um, and just the last couple years. And I think, again, a team trending in the right direction uh, for Gatesville, but not an easy matchup to start the playoffs in Gonzalez. So Gatesville was another one of those teams that had a bye week uh, right yeah. at the end of uh, the season. Yeah, they had a bunch of those. Is like we had any games to cover on Friday. Yeah, it was weird. It, it, uh, <laughs> it was uh, I'm glad we have playoffs now because last week, you're right, was kind of a down week schedule-wise. Um, after that University-Belton game, there was a significant drop-off. So, um, 